Good afternoon all. Uh, this video is kind of an update to one I did um, which I called Arduino PWM inversion issue way back in July uh, for the Muppet 2 project and back then I was having the problem that when I inverted the PWM signal, uh, this one's non-inverted so as I go clockwise it goes uh, higher, when I inverted it you take it all the way or very close to 100% and then when you got to 100% it would actually flip down to uh, zero volts and going the other way you'd get very close to the whole thing being zero volts and at zero volts it would flip up and uh, at the time I kind of just dismissed it as um, a hardware problem with the AT Mega 328P but it isn't because now that I'm doing uh, PWM in a slightly different way, I'm writing directly to registers in the uh, chip here rather than using Arduino's analog write. And it is analog write that is the source of the problem. Now that I'm doing that, I'm not having a problem. Now, this is not the inverted waveform, but I can switch on the inverted waveform. There it is. So as I take the non inverted, the positive waveform, close to 100%. It stays at 100% and the inverted waveform gets nearer to zero. It stays at zero and it works all the way down to the other end. This one stays low, this one stays high. So this is all fixed. This is all working. But I did have to um, not use analog write for PWM and uh, write directly to the registers in the AT Mega 328P. Let's take a look at the code for that. So here it is, and uh, because there's so little of it, I've done it really big so that you can see it. Um, I'm just writing to four registers. They are TCCR1A, TCCR1B, ICR1, and the data direction register, DDRB. Um, I'm doing an analog read because uh, doing analog read by reading and writing registers directly would be quite challenging. And then I'm writing uh, the pop value to OCR1A and OCR1B. Those are the two waveforms we're looking at on the scope. And by writing different values to these two registers, we can change the mark space ratio. Now in the comments of the original video where I showed the problem, of course I can't show the problem now because it doesn't occur. Um, quite a lot of the comments suggested, well, why don't you fix the problem in software? So that when I took this uh, near to all zero and it flipped up to the other state why don't you put in an if statement that simply flips it back the other way well actually that wouldn't have been a terribly good idea because the problem was being caused itself by software the problem was being caused by the analog write function because Arduino wanted to sort of get over this little issue uh, so that no one would have problems with uh, PWM. The only trouble is it was being done a bit crudely, not being done very intelligently. So it was being applied um, to a positive going signal and it didn't do any harm. It would settle at zero and it would settle at, um, what would you call it, high or logic one or 255. Um, but it wasn't being properly applied when you inverted one of the channels and that's because inverting using direct register writes Arduino assumes you're not going to do that. So it turns out that to uh, fix this problem in software the solution is actually not to use software not to use the analog write function but what actually was going on because here using register uh, write direct I can get the positive going waveform to settle at zero settle at 100%, I can get the inverted signal to settle at 100% and to settle at zero. So what was the issue? What is the issue that analog write was seeking to try and fix? Well, it has to do with um, the hardware inside the chip. Now this is phase correct mode. And in phase correct mode, as you take the um, compare value up to well, in this case, it's, well, let's call it 255, up to 255, the PWM goes to 100%. As you take the, uh, the compare value down to zero, the PWM uh, output goes to zero. This works fine. But if I switch this now from phase correct into fast PWM, you'll see the problem. 
So with a small uh, code change to my register writes, I've now got this in fast PWM mode, and you'll notice that the frequency has increased. That's really what fast PWM is all about. Now, as I take this one to 100%, it goes to 100%, that's absolutely fine. As I take it down to uh, zero, it doesn't go to zero. It locks on one. In other words, um, the signal goes high for one count state, one out of the 256 uh, counting cycles, it actually goes high. Now, this is the problem that the Arduino software writers wanted to solve. They looked at this and said, oh, you can't get uh, the PWM output to go to all zero. Oh, well, let's just do a fudge then. We'll say if the input value uh, written to the compare register is zero, Let's take it out of PWM mode and put it in a standard digital output mode and set the output to zero. Whoops, my torch fell off. What's interesting is that uh, although they fixed it for this zero end, so they uh, got rid of this little spike, they also saw fit to fix it at the 100% end. Actually, I should say the 255 end. They also fixed it there where there's no need to fix it because it doesn't occur there. It only occurs down at this uh, end where you're putting a zero in for the PWM value. They also didn't only fix it for fast PWM, they fixed it for phase correct PWM. So they fixed it for every combination of PWM there is, even when they didn't need to fix it. Now, if I wanted uh, fast PWM mode, I could fix this problem where it won't go to zero. I could fix that in software, but there's no point fixing in software something which has already been fixed in software, but not fixed properly. Now, fortunately, I don't want uh, fast PWM. I want phase correct. So let me just recompile my Arduino sketch for phase correct. And that should go to the lower frequency because it's doing 510 counts rather than 256. And this doesn't have the problem either in uh, non-inverted output for the non-inverted output or for the inverted output. They work absolutely as I want them to work. And I have the added advantage uh, if I switch on the measure function that I have the frequency of my choice. This is 15.6 kilohertz, but I can vary that to pretty much anything I want. Um, so I can vary the frequency of this for my Muppet 2 project to match whatever inductor I'm using. And I've got my positive going uh, waveform for one of the MOSFETs in the synchronous buck converter and uh, the complementary output for the other MOSFET so that I can do synchronous rectification uh, buck conversion. So no longer is there an Arduino PWM inversion issue for my Muppet 2 project. Uh, the inversion issue is fixed. Now, if you'd like me to go into uh, more detail about how this uh, seemingly very simple bit of code works to set up um, all these timer registers, then I'm quite happy to do that, but it can get quite complicated um, going into detail about uh, the block diagram, uh, the various modes, phase correct, fast. Well, let me show you in the 80 Mega 328P data sheet. So this is the uh, block diagram of the 16-bit timer. Uh, this chip only has one 16-bit timer. It's timer one. So uh, you've got the counter itself. You've got the OCR A and B registers, which are the compare registers. Now, changing the value put into those uh, changes the duty cycle on the two outputs because these timers have two PWM outputs. The 16-bit timer can use ICR as a top value. That enables you to change um, the frequency of PWM while still retaining two outputs. You can't do that on the 8-bit timers. You lose one of the outputs if you choose to change uh, the top value and therefore the frequency. And TCCR1A and TCCR1B are the setup registers, which you can put various different values in to affect things like the prescaler and the various modes. <laughs> there are lots of modes. Uh, here are the modes. There are 16 of them. 
Um, I think I settled on phase correct uh, using ICR1 as the top value. This means I can get, um, I don't have that uh, little spike glitch. I can also uh, get uh, complementary waveforms with non overlapping, and I'll show that in a moment, uh, and also vary the frequency with mo this mode. So, this is the mode that I ended up going for. And uh, then you need to have some understanding of how the counter works in the various modes. So, for example, in fast mode, it counts from 0 up to 255. That's assuming you're doing 8-bit count. Uh, and then overflow, so it jumps straight back to 0. And uh, in phase correct mode, it counts from 0 up to 255, or whatever your top value that you've set. You can change that top value and actually have the... Uh, the frequency increase, but counts up to 255, then it counts from 255 all the way back down to zero again. But it doesn't uh, stay at 255 twice, it only stays there once. Similarly at the bottom, doesn't stay at zero twice, so it's not a 512 step count, it's only 510 steps, and there's all that sort of stuff. So by using phase correct mode, I can do this. Now it doesn't appear that there's much going on there, but if I switch on the mega zoom and we zoom into uh, the pulse at one end of the scale, you can see here that when I switch one MOSFET on, I switch the other one off, but with little uh, bands to either side, so that at no time are both MOSFETs switched on at the same time. And in fact, there's a little sort of guard band, so that if, uh, say, this bottom MOSFET were a little slow to switch off, and the top MOSFET were a little rapid to switch on, you don't have the situation where both MOSFETs are on at the same time, because that would create a dead short to ground. Uh, if I swing this right around to the other end of the scale, you can see the same thing there. At no time are both MOSFETs on, and in fact there's a little gap in here to protect uh, from shoot through, which is what you get uh, if you turn both MOSFETs on at the same time. The MOSFETs are sort of arranged from VCC, MOSFET, MOSFET to ground. If you switch them both on, you'll get current flowing from VCC directly to ground. That's not good. So I am now extremely happy. Uh, not only have I got um, positive going and a complementary MOSFET drive signals, I've got them phase correct with this little non-overlapping section, so I can vary that uh, to try and get the maximum efficiency. I've also got uh, full control over frequency. I can have whatever frequency I want uh, on this. And also, because I'm using the 16-bit timer, this is actually a 512 uh, step resolution. It's not 8-bit resolution, it's actually 9-bit resolution. So yes, I am happy. Cheerio.